Yo, what's up, guys? I want to do a quick intro to this video. I'm not going to talk through the video. There's, there's tons of story and dialogue, and I don't want to interrupt it. Uh, so we're, it's called Sam's Story, so obviously we're playing as Sam, not Artyom. And this takes place after the main game, and the main goal is to make our way back to California to reunite with our dad. And this DLC is like a true open world, just like the main game. Uh, the last DLC was more linear and pretty short. So I'm already, I already burned a bunch of hours just trying to search every looking cranny for any little, you know, little secret. Um, you're going to run into a new monster, this creature. Uh, I fought it twice, and it's pretty freaking tough. It's a pain in the ass. You're going to run into him right away, and then run into it later. So I didn't finish the DLC yet, so I don't know if we uh, fight it again or not. I think it's what happened. It looked like it was dead, but I don't know if there's one of them or a few of them, so we'll see. And make sure you check out the achievements and the trophies before you start so you know what you're looking for. Uh, there's going to be uh, some upgrades, some harmonica melodies, and uh, some like secret stashes you got to grab. Uh, so just be on the lookout for, for that stuff. And to start the DLC, uh, make sure you go to, what was it, chapters, and then it'll come up as Sam's story. Alright, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Parting with my friends, it's hard, but for them, the Colonel's death signaled the end of their journey, and the beginning of a new life on the shores of Lake Baikal. For me, the loss became a threshold between the Order and my own life, between duty and my dream to see Dad again. And like Artyom before, I chose to pursue my wild dream. Along the way, I sometimes felt the trees, ruins, and leaning wire posts vanishing behind. Just an endless movie reel projected onto a ragged screen just for me. A lonely late night viewer in an empty theater. <laughs> Yet, every morning, the sun rising dead ahead brought another change of scenery making sure that I was, in fact, getting closer to the Pacific. One step at a time, slowly but steadily, no matter the obstacles on the way. One day, <laughs> sitting in a recliner on my dad's porch, I might actually be tempted to start a book about this trip or something. One day. But not here. Not now. I see the town that's to become my springboard for a leap across the ocean. And I smell salt in the air. If there really is even a slight chance of me ever getting home, I will find it here. Saying my goodbyes to Dad before going to Russia, I promised him this was going to be my last tour of duty. Besides, I, I wasn't going to war. I expected a cushy job guarding the embassy. How could I know that instead of a cushy job, waiting for me were mushroom clouds, desperate struggle, salvation, and a tour of duty that would last 20 years? But as soon as Artyom's dogged determination to break out of the tunnels paid off the way it did, I hope to see my father again took root. As we were going east, that hope grew. By the time we reached Novosibirsk, going home was the only thing I could think about. Only duty before my commander and my friends kept me from leaving immediately. But my service with the Order came to an end on the shores of Lake Baikal. There, on that hill, through the terrible pain of loss, I could feel that my friends had also found... closure. Their journey was over. Not mine, though. The hope that's been nagging on me for so long now turned into an obsession. The purpose of my life. I had to go.
and my friends who had long since become my family only understood. As I'm entering the outskirts of Vladivostok, I know I was immensely lucky to have gotten even this far. But since fate chose to take me here, to the Pacific, I must do everything I can to find a way home and see my old man again. Привет, Владивосток. You idiot! What you have me do? I guess that's all. I'm not greedy. Ha <laughs> ha. Don't worry. We ain't gonna kill you. The kingpin wants you alive. And how do you know what he wants? I have my sources. As for you, stop wasting my time and come out. Show yourself so I know where to go. Fucking year. Much obliged. You motherfucker! <laughs>
think we got all of them? Come up here and let's talk. All right. Down. Hey, take it easy. I just helped you. Put it down right now. All right. I'm not looking for trouble. I'm looking for a ship that could take me home. You know any good ones? <laughs> we only have one ship here, and she's a looker. Come, I'll show you. over here. It's a long fall. You don't want to join those poor bastards. They keep chasing me, trying to earn favor with the cat. At least they want to get me alive. Get your spyglass. You can see her perfectly from here. She's right over there. Okay, wow. A submarine? It's freaking huge. Nice ticket home. Speaking of your home, where is it? Your accent seems vaguely familiar. San Diego. Damn, another American. Seriously, talk about coincidence. Another American? Danu! Looks like you really don't know anything. I'll tell you later. Huh? We've got to scram. What the hell is that? The Batwing! Let's get out of here before it gets us! Follow me!
take it, you bastards! Come and take it! You're coming. With us! Take him alive! Take this! Fuck off! <laughs> some small fries. We know the guy was with him, though. Turns out the guy's an American. <laughs> Please, boss. He's more like you on a bad day. Oh, I see. Uh, pass the radio to that American, will you? Okay, I do. Lance Corporal Samuel Taylor, U.S. Marine Corps. trouble believing it myself.
Look, it's the boss. Yeah, it's me! Well, hello there! Why are you still tied up? Huh? I love it! Please, come aboard! Take the guests to the gangway! Yes, boss. Oh, shit. We pissed the cat off. <clears throat> we should have taken the rope off. Then we'd get you that right there on our own. It's just no making the cat happy. It's not that big. Nice to meet you too, Tom. Is the ship yours? Can I book a ticket? <laughs> uh, follow me. Let's talk. So, where did you want to go? San Diego, one way. California. Oh, truly. A heaven on Earth. I saved for the traffic in LA, of course. That was hell. <clears throat> Look, man. Remind me. What was the name of your baseball team? Right! Oh, our team used to play them often. I'm from Seattle, you know. <sighs> Mariners, if you think any further check is in order. Nothing personal, Lance Corporal. These are tough times. Of course. Trust but verify. Exactly. By the way, Sam, this is Clint, my right-hand man. He's in charge of the applied force department of my business here. Hello, Sam. Ochen priyatno, Klim. Clint's boys couldn't invite you here at a better time. The doctor flex the wind somewhat, but still. Just look at that. Yeah. Had I stayed there, I'd be halfway to Kansas by now. Not that I want to go there. <laughs> Where do you want to go? <laughs> Though, wait. I, how about we have a good smoke and hear your story first, Sam? Won't say no to a smoke. Even though there isn't much of a story, really. Middle East, Afghanistan, then Moscow. I was on the embassy guard detail. Happened to be in the metro when shit hit the fan, but a lot of people survived there. And then, we just sat in the tunnels for 20 years, thinking we were the last people alive in the world. How come? A perimeter of jammers. The leaders were in the know, but kept it under wraps. For 20 years? But why? Haven't got a clue, really. A friend of mine learned the truth, and with him, the whole squad I was with. We had to run. Across the continent, we had a train. 
At Lake Baikal, we split. I went further east and kept going until I ended up here. If my dad is still alive, he could still be waiting for my return. He'd be over 70 now. I haven't got much time. I see. So you're looking for someone to take you home. Yeah. People don't just sail across the Pacific nowadays, unlike the old times. But I can take you there on this sub. It's rather cool than Canton. You're right, Clem. Could I help somehow, Tom? And how did you get this submarine in the first place? It's a long story. Uh, perhaps just an executive summary? Well, I am in a hurry, but not to such an extent. <laughs> well, in that case, I'll start from afar. Oh, by the way, I almost nailed Tennessee Sour Mash here. No proper aging, of course, but the flavor is basically right. Want you drink with us, Clem? I'll drink my own. We don't really get that fancy stuff, Tom. <laughs> it was just the first failed batch, you know? Uh, but suit yourself, of course. To our meeting. To our meeting. To our meeting. Wow. Kurosho. Oh, yeah. What did I tell you? So, ready to listen now? I'd been doing business here before the war, mainly on the international weapons market. The locals had lots of money and opportunities, but no connections and style whatsoever. That's where I came in. Klim handled the relations with our local partners. Just before the war, our enterprise was starting to gain momentum. But then the bombs fell. You can guess the rest. Yep. Our company had a competitive advantage, though. Warehouses full of weapons. And Klim's boys in charge of guarding those warehouses. <laughs> Then we entered a phase of dynamic growth, and a few years ago learned of a flourishing settlement here in Vladivostok. The place was governed by the ex-captain you met before. Uh, he did do a decent job of it, I must admit, but was not ready for the ongoing war against bandits. That's what we offered to help with. The captain took the deal and was not disappointed. Klim found a radical solution to the bandit problem. Yeah, you can still see some hanging. Right. And then we learned that the sub was operational all along. And the captain never even thought of using this immense opportunity. How was he supposed to use it? Obviously, you're not a businessman. Just like him. Naturally, to everyone's benefit. For so many years after the war, mankind has been barely holding on to life because there was no force left to unite the survivors in pursuit of restoring the civilization. But we, we could create such a force. A new state, the true shining city on a hill, to lead the whole world to new accomplishments, to turn the apocalypse into a new beginning. We won't even have to shoot. Just drop the anchor in view of any settlement, open our missile ports, and they will readily give us everything. And accept our power. Mm. Oh, do you find this inelegant? It would be just a statement of fact. We are power here. We are the force to lead everyone into the future. I see. So, what do the captains say? Oh, he went ballistic and tried to get rid of us. But when he saw his game was up for good, he ran away. Which means you get to decide where to sail now, right? Certainly. There's just one slight problem. The sub's all right, but its reactors need to be refueled. But only the ex-captain knows where to get the fuel rods and can control the procedure. Regrettably, after our falling out, he wouldn't even talk to us no matter what. Yeah. A lot of things starting to make sense now. Great. Then I can offer you a deal. Sam, I'd like you to be our negotiator. Make that fossil understand. If he helps us get the fuel, we leave the settlement to him. We'll find a better base in no time anyway. Of course, he's also welcome to have all crew members who won't follow me. And once we get the fuel, San Diego will be our first destination.
deal. Deal. Sam, you'll need some protection as our pearly man. I'll send my best guys. Thanks, Clem. But I prefer working alone. <laughs> oh, that's some true grit right there. Hey, leave Sam be, Clem. He can handle it. <laughs> Whatever you say, boss. So, we have a deal. Still, if you are going to represent us in negotiations, we'd better equip you to our standard. Uh, Clem, please set Sam's radio to pick up our frequencies. Sure. Here. Now for the important part, the map of the area. It's as exact as it can be, all things considered. Plus, it shows all the captain's hideouts we know of. You should check those first. Done. Spasibo, Klim. Well, radio's taken care of. As for the rest of your gear, drop by the shooting range. You'll be issued everything. Have some rest first, though. You had a long day. Thank you, but I'd rather go now. I prefer to strike iron while it's hot. <laughs> well, <laughs> your choice. Thanks, Tom. Guess I'll be going now. The storm's already over, after all. Good luck. We'll of keep course. Just leave. Just leave. Bye. Tell me, Tom. Why? Why what? Why did you not let me send my boys with him? They could cut the old goat cleanly and quietly. Oh, enough. I know you're cleanly and quietly. Your boys fucked up for good when they let him get away. The captain himself, I could forgive. We're keeping tabs on him. But where's the XO? The others? We're looking. Oh, looking? You've been looking for almost a year now. And now the captain is our only chance. Don't you see? I just can't trust your boys with him. Well, but you can trust this passerby. He's an American. So what? I don't know him. You don't know him either. But I do. He survived in Moscow. He survived there, and then he came here. Well, if you say so. I certainly do. And enough of this! <sighs> do you have anyone watching the passage to the upper marsh? Observation post. Two guys. Good. Tell them to be on the lookout for our guests. Provide him support if need be, and tell that to everyone else. Got it. Let's think of where he could even find the guy. Where was the captain seen? Everywhere. Pick a point. How about here? Right under our noses. The pool? Lobsters. They stopped using the place long ago. I see. Occupied too. More fogly hunters. 